the National Institute of Standards and Technologies Cloud Reference Model. I was having a discussion with someone the other day about cloud and they said, well, everyone has their own definition for, and I don't even remember what the term was. And I said to them, no, that isn't how it works. There is a definition for each of those terms and those terms are defined by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. NIST is a government organization that makes sure that everyone who does business with the government uses the same terminology so that you can compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges when you're bidding out a government project. So they define cloud and they define platform as a service and infrastructure as a service and software as a service. As a result, you can say, yes, the product that I offer is this. And everyone will know that it comes with the following parts. And that's how the government makes sure that when you're bidding things, that you are in fact qualified to make those bids and that you're not tweaking stuff through marketing. At least that's the theory. The problem with this is that a lot of companies that aren't doing business with the government or putting it into a government contract then kind of bastardize the terminology to fit whatever they need. So, real quick, a few of the parts of cloud computing as defined by NIST. NIST has a service layer, which is where most people interact with the cloud. And the service layer is really, I'm going to get something as a service. The software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. Software as a service is easy to think about if you think about any of the online software that you use. Most of us have had a Yahoo Mail or a Gmail or a Hotmail account at some point in our lives. And that's email software as a service out in the web. We don't install Yahoo on our desktop and even if we do it's just a client, it's not the service. We don't install Hotmail on our desktop, it's a service in the cloud. Same with Gmail. And we don't have to know anything about that service in terms of what does it run for infrastructure? What is the, the platform that it's running on? Is it Linux? Is it Windows? Is it, you know, OS2 Warp? Is it DOS? Is it any number of technologies in the background? And in fact, it might be running multiple technologies in the background. We don't have to know. We don't have to care. It's a cloud service and it's software that we interact with. A lot of the times when we're talking about moving things to the cloud, we're really talking about putting them into a software as a service. Dropbox is a software as a service. Flickr is a software as a service. And so when you store your pictures in the cloud or your video in the cloud or your documents in the cloud or you see one of the Microsoft commercials where they talk about to the cloud, they're generally talking about software as a service. Platform as a service is really meant to be like your operating system is. It is a layer to write software against and it should have all of the parts that you need in order to write your software. For example, when you write an application for Windows, you don't have to include the audio driver and the video driver and the network driver and all of those parts. They are part of the platform. When you write a game for the iPhone, you don't have to you know, write the stuff to read the SMS out of the air. You just have to say, get the SMS. And so those are the kinds of functions that a platform as a service should offer. You should be able to write against the core without having to provide all the intermediary drivers or support talking to the hardware. You should still be obfuscated from the infrastructure underneath it. It should be like writing a program for the desktop for the most part. Infrastructure as a service is something like Amazon generally has. You're going to pick what you're going to run for a platform, you're going to install it, you're going to manage it, you're going to have 
deep access to what's called the bare metal, generally in cloud space, where you are aware of at least some of the hardware, even if it's virtual hardware. And you have to think about how the network architecture works, how the database architecture works, how the components talk to each other, and how you scale it. This is infrastructure in the traditional sense, but as a service. You don't have to have the hands-on to install more hard drives. You simply provision those things. So instead of talking to a platform or an OS, you're talking much closer to the hardware, you're picking your operating systems, you're making decisions about what's going to run on that infrastructure. And so those are the three typical types of cloud service provider models. Now, there are some spots in between each of those, and we'll talk about those in some of the other videos that are coming up. But that should give you a quick overview of software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service as they apply to the NIST model. And I'll link to NIST in the description so that you can go out and read their stuff. They've got a couple of hundred pages of really dense information about what everything means and definitions for pretty much every term. So if you're thinking about getting into the cloud space or you already are in the cloud space or you're writing marketing materials for the cloud space, this is a great place to go look for what is the standardized definition so that you can make sure that you aren't writing copy that doesn't match what the defined definitions are.